Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor from Johnson County Community College. The subject of today's short screencast will be HTML tables. Here's an example of an HTML table on a web page. An HTML table should be used when you're presenting a small list of information. In this case, I've got one, two, three columns and one, two, three rows of data, organizing some of the courses I teach at JCCC, the course number, course title, and the number of credits. In days past, we used to use tables in another way, not only to show a small list of information and code it correctly, but also to organize the content on the page, to create columns, constrain images in certain locations on the page, that type of thing. That whole use for the table tags has gone by the wayside as our style sheets have become more professional and the HTML5 semantic tags have allowed us to more correctly identify our content. Getting that off my chest, let's get to the table tags. The table tags start and end with the table end table tags. All the content inside the table needs to go inside those two tags. Every row, and I've got one, two, three rows here, goes inside TR, close TR tags. So the only difficult thing about learning the table tags is realizing that we typically code the table tags vertically, whereas each row appears in the table horizontally. Each row in the table needs to have the same number of cells, and those cells can be TH cells, table header cells, or TD cells, table data cells. And you'll see I've got one, two, three sets of TH tags, table header, that's semantic because that row contains heading information, not data. So semantically, the first row in your table is typically coded with TH tags. Every other row of your table is typically coded with TD tags, table data. I also have one blank row here with one, two, three sets of TD tags, and that third row is just down here as an empty row, so it's sort of collapsed given there's no content in that last row but it's ready to go, Web 124, Java, Script 2, and it's also two credits. Save, refresh, and there's my third row of my table. The styling for the table is sort of interesting. You already know about the background color, and I've chosen a light gray here. Another consideration that you might use is this width rule. If you go ahead and use the width rule at 100%, save and refresh the page, then the table is going to span the entire width of your screen, regardless of the size of your viewport. The border collapse rule comes into play as soon as you put a border on these cells. And I'm gonna put a border, one pixel, that's a light black color, solid, on all the TD and TH cells. Save, refresh, and you'll see that now I've got a light border going around each one of the cells. The border collapse rule on the table then collapses those borders so you don't get that double border effect. So border collapse is a very common rule for your table. However, I don't like how close my text is to my border, so I'm going to add a little padding. I'm going to measure my padding in M's, which an M is the default size of the capital letter M in that particular browser. So this will change based on what browser is showing the web page and that gives me a little bit of padding between my content and my border and I'm also going to add text align center so that that content is centered in each one of those columns. The final thing I want to show you with your style sheet that is kind of cool and you can add this to any selector is the hover pseudo class and you build a pseudo class pseudo means false so it's a false class. It's really not a different class. It's just a different state of being for the TD. And this means when I hover over the TD, I want the background color to change to FFF, which is all red, all green, all blue. That would be white. And that's where I get this particular effect. Now you can add the hover pseudo class to any element you want. Sometimes I'll see it set on the TRs instead of the TDs. Save, refresh, and then the whole entire row will change as I move the mouse over that table. So that's a cool effect. That's a little bit of interactivity that CSS can provide. 
We typically think of interacting with the user as the job of JavaScript, but the technologies do overlap a little bit. Obviously, HTML interacts with the user every time we have them click a hyperlink. And here's a way that cascading style sheets, CSS, interact with the user. Thank you for listening.